Hi, I'd like to start by thanking you for this honor, and um, especially after hearing those speeches, very honored to be with this panel of fellows. I really enjoyed that. Uh, I wanted to kind of bookmark my, or bookend my uh, talk with pictures of my family. And this is me and my son. And what I want to point out about this picture is I'm doing the traditional Spider-Man thing, but he's the bad Spider-Man who shoots it with a claw. He's well with a claw. So uh, I really thought about, when you think about getting any kind of honor, you think about where your values came from. And, uh, and I thought a lot about that and where my career has taken me and what I've done and why. And uh, what really struck me is my, my mom and my grandparents are Holocaust survivors. And my mom actually was born in a concentration camp. And so I always think of myself as the next generation from the survivors of the Holocaust. And I remember my mom saying to me when I was pretty young, don't push papers around for a living. Do something that impacts other people. And of all the things she said, a lot of them were critical. Uh, <laughs> that one stood, it really stuck with me as I think really helped embrace my values. And she's now retired and doing Doctors Without Borders and kind of living that dream. And so I think I really thought about, you know, as I kind of tried to figure out a career for myself, which took me from barely graduating high school to going to community college to going to a four-year college, kind of that path that I wanted to do something that made a difference. And as I think about my academic career, I feel like I've taken steps closer and closer to, to impact in the community, which is what I really want to do. And just some of the things that, that we've been doing in New Mexico is uh, that I think have been doing that. And, and that's one of the reasons I really wanted to go to New Mexico State University uh, is because I felt like there's a lot of need in our community, but there's also a lot of desire to make a difference. And we're at a land grant university. So I felt like that really gives us kind of the impetus to have to do that, to want to do that. And so we started a community health and wellness clinic. And we've served anywhere from 120 to 170 clients a year. And these are clients who don't have the resources for mental health treatment. So through the work of students and, and faculty, we've been able to serve people who weren't getting treatment in our community, which I think is a really big deal. We've been able to be involved with our local school system in helping do assessment. And one of the really interesting things I think we're doing there is we have a partnership with the federally qualified health care centers. And that's really community health where we live. So, uh, and we're providing behavioral health services. So I really believe this is the wave of the future. I know a lot of people believe that, is that holistic care. And that people are, when they go to their doctor, which is very normal, they're looking at their mental health needs, their behavioral health needs. So I'm really proud of that and I've, I'd love to see that continue. And the person who really inspired me to do that is Dr. Eve Adams, who's here. And so, and uh, lastly, or close to lastly, I think, is what I believe. Uh, I just, uh, we just, someone just mentioned that uh, we don't have the resources right now to provide health care to everyone who needs it. And some statistics would say only 20% of those people with diagnosable mental health care, mental health disorders, are getting the treatment they need. So uh, if you think about that, we're really not doing the job. And often those 20% are people with resources. So I really believe, if not the answer, prevention and health promotion is one of the answers. And recently, the prevention section led by Sally Hagee, who's here, and John Romano came out with uh, the prevention guidelines. And I have a bunch of magnets in my pocket, <laughs> as does uh, probably Andy. Uh, so if anyone wants a magnet after this. Uh, that the prevention guidelines as a way to kind of guide us in the next step towards what we could be doing as a field. And I, George Albee said, uh, there's a moral imperative to prevent suffering before it occurs. So if you think we have empirically validated pre prevention, we know it works. So if we're not doing it in our communities, in some ways we're allowing people to get to the point where they need treatment, and we don't want to do that. Uh, and then uh, I believe context and ecological approaches are really keys. And I know this is um, preaching to the choir here, but uh, a lot of the ways we train psychologists don't always take those into account. And especially thinking about people's multiple ecological contexts in every way we interact with them. So I think that's really important for the future. And I think one way to do that is interprofessional approaches. 
So in the behavioral health uh, we're doing at New Mexico State, we're talking about people working with community educators and nurses and doctors and social workers, really this interprofessional collaboration that starts to address these multiple ecological contexts. And who I'm grateful to, lots and lots of people, uh, but my mentors all along the way and who colleagues, a number of them are here today. Uh, one of the things that kind of struck me when I was thinking about my career, which this makes you do, is I remember someone gave me the advice early on, if you can get students to work in your programmatic research area, your life will be a lot easier going towards tenure. So whatever idea they have for their dissertation, try and bend them your way. And I never did that. I've, so I've been spread all over the place with the students I've worked with, and I've learned so much from that. Like that was, I'm glad I did it, and I was able to connect with students who had interests that were very different from mine. And I think back in the students, two of them are here today, they're so much smarter than I am. So, uh, so learning from them was the right thing to do. And finally, my family, who makes it all worth it, and with my wife and daughter, uh, who makes, you know, that's really the reason you go to work and come home every day, is for your family. So thank you very much for the time.